Hello, friends of the internet. I am Austin from Austin B Media here. Uh, I am here with Emily Allen, uh, director of the documentary Cisco Kid, uh, which follows Eileen uh, building a desert uh, village. I think it's the terminology. Um, at least that's what they used in the documentary um, <laughs> to kind of describe the town of Cisco, Utah. Um, you had your world premiere at an international festival I haven't heard of, uh, <laughs> if I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, but you had your North American premiere at Slam Dance this past week. Um, so welcome. Thanks so, so much for taking time out of uh, the wind down of Slam Dance, as it were, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. And the village is actually, if someone else says it about about Cisco, but it is a town okay. and Eileen has a little bit of property in it. Yeah, that's what I thought um, because uh, I'll be honest, this is my fifth interview today. So the brain cells are in the single <laughs> digits right now. That's okay. <laughs> um, but um, so uh, how did you discover Eileen and Cisco, Utah? Yeah, um, I was talking to a friend in uh, Brooklyn, where I live, about how much I miss the landscape of Utah, because that's where I'm originally from, and how over the years, it's become more interesting to me as a, um, like a creative place, like a place to possibly work on a project in, but I didn't have anything in mind. And then that friend said, oh, my sister just moved into a ghost town. So, <laughs> so um I asked my friend if I could get Eileen's number and talk to them on the phone for about two hours and they were open to it. And so that's how it all started. You know, you know, you know, you just live, you know, you just got get a call about, you know, somebody living in the middle of nowhere, you know, <laughs> as you do. Um, but, but yeah, it's really interesting um, because it, 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 it's not something we hear a whole lot about, you know, you kind of hear some stories about like these places out in the middle of nowhere, um, where it's just like, Hey, what is this town? Where, where is everybody? But, um, but uh, I, I want to ask, um, what did you learn about these so-called, I think somebody calls it a ghost town, but there's all kinds of different names for it. Right. In the movie. Yeah, I mean, it could just be called abandoned um, or ghost town. I mean, I think, um, you know, there are lots of uh, ghost towns around the U.S., and I think a lot of them um, became ghost towns because of the uh, construction of freeways um, and or, you know, maybe they had one resource that ran dry. Um, you know, there's various reasons, but uh, Cisco originally was a water filling station for steam engine trains and that's kind of what made it a spot um and once the train technology changed then that was sort of the beginning of it you know the population trickling out because that what that you know they didn't need that anymore and then the freeway was built i-70 uh in the 70s i think and that kind of just you know, emptied it out. There were still a few people though, hanging on, you know, living there. Um, but I think as far as I know, there were only about, uh, I don't know, a handful, three or four or five um, in, until about maybe 10 years ago-ish. I don't know exactly. Um, there is someone that owns property there that sometimes comes around, but he doesn't, he doesn't live there full time. So when Eileen discovered it, uh, well, not discover, but for themselves, um, it really, no one was living there full time and, and, uh, you know, and there are no resources, no, uh, no water, you know, uh, no grocery store or nothing like that, but there is electricity that they found. So. <laughs> Which I thought was wild. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, you have to go down. Um, I don't know if she had to go down this well to get water, um, <laughs> 
or, or no, she did that to get roots out of the well. Oh, so Eileen like uh, went into went into um, I think it's actually called something else, not a well, but we they thought it was a well. Um, to get some water to put into a, a kind of homemade bathtub, but they were also saw that there were all these roots in there and the water levels had changed from the last time they were there. So they thought maybe if they could kind of clear out these roots, there would be more water. And um, I don't know if that's actually how it works, <laughs> but they, that was what they were trying to do. And I think they also wanted to see if the water, test the water to see if it was clean to be drinking water, but then they brought a little kit, but that part's not in the film because um, they didn't really use it correctly. <laughs> so and I don't, I'm not sure if it's, if it's drinkable, but it's definitely something they could take a bath in. Yeah. But that was something that surprised me. I was like, Oh, she has internet connection on her phone or, or maybe it was just on her phone. I don't know. Um, she's browsing something at, at one point um, or they are browsing. Uh, so, yeah. Because Eileen did um, become non-binary at after um, yeah. the production. Yeah, uh, right. Um, after the film, Eileen uh, changed her pronouns to they, them. Um, yeah, the, it's, so it's it's funny because it, it's not, Eileen's not totally in the middle of nowhere. You know, they're in a place that's right off the freeway that sometimes people pass through because it's only about an hour away from Moab and, Colo you know, uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. So it's, it's, I thought that was interesting because it's not an extreme setting, um, but yet it is in many ways. They, you know, they don't have so many essential things and they still have to drive an hour to get water or, you know, do laundry or get food that, you know, the landscape, you can't really grow food in. Um, and, but yet there's some electricity and then they were, you know, then they got the internet because they realized, you know, the only way to, or at least the only way they could make money was to, um, you know, rent out one of the structures they fixed up or two of the structures. So internet became really important um, so that they could have some money to keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. I think Airbnb is mentioned once mm -hmm. in the film, I think. And I think, yeah um but yeah it, it it is interesting because i'm actually in a place where um i actually live in an rv right now mm. um so like some of those things where i'm not as remote but yeah. um like doing being able to walk to the wa water and things like that and i was like oh yeah totally um and uh the remoteness of it all um, yeah. even though it's kind of in between places, you know, mm -hmm. um, because for example, the closest town's like 35 minutes away or yeah, 35, 50 minutes away, a lot of curvy roads. So mm. if, if it was all straight, it'd probably be 10. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, um, I really related to a lot of uh, that. Um, and, um, I saw in my research after watching the film that you did a Kickstarter campaign for the film. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, what the, um, I believe senior director of film at Kickstarter is one of the producers on this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So during production, I didn't have a producer. It was just me, um, directing, doing the cinematography sound, everything. And then once I had a fine cut, um, I, you know, I really wanted to get a good colorist to do, to work on it, a really good um, sound designer because, you know, my sound gear was not that great and there's definitely a lot of wind in Cisco and things like that. So, you know, I thought it would be important for me to, to get a good sound designer and then also, you know, just funds for applying to festivals, legal stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So I brought on two producers. One um, is Elise, who you just mentioned, who works at Kickstarter, and the other is um, Shannon Fitzpatrick, who uh, mostly works as an editor, um, but has done some producing. Um, so yeah, they were really helpful. I really needed, um, I mean, Elise was extremely helpful 
for the fundraising because they you know are so um involved in the indie film community so that was really important um and you know we met our goal and exceeded our goal and we we're able to get some you know great colors and some great sound design done yeah that's awesome um and um i wanted to ask um have you been still are you still in touch with eileen what's the uh progress on the uh cisco yeah we're still in touch um you know a lot has happened there since my film uh ended <laughs> or my filming ended uh, which was in fall of 2019 um they started a artist residency um just really like you know getting an artist they kind of fundraise themselves uh, they had their sisters that were helping them with that and then eventually got a couple other people um, involved. And then they would host an artist for one month in Cisco. Um, so they were doing that for a while. I'm not sure if it's going right now. I, I think, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but there's also been some issues with Airbnb because even though they are not you know, not in a regular community, it's still a part of a certain district in the area, Moab, um, and they started cracking down on Airbnbs. So, uh, you know, people had to come out to see if things were up to code and all this stuff. So anyway, they, they haven't been able to do their Airbnb. And so they've been kind of, they started a Patreon channel actually. And if, people wanted to follow it. It's pretty interesting because they got another little piece of land um, away from Cisco. They're not living there really, but th there was a little wooden structure that they, I think it was a, a pig pen or something, but then they made into a house using found materials. So they documented their progress doing that. And you could subscribe to watch sort of these videos on how Eileen's um, constructing things and working on things. And and uh, so they're doing that. They're still in Cisco, but it's, you know, it's just, it's always a little in flux. And I think they're, um, they're still there. They don't know how long they'll be there, but they've, they've definitely found their passion, uh, I think of, um, you know, using found material and creating, you know, really creative and functional structures. Yeah, I'll make sure to include the Patreon link in the uh, description. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, I another thing I discovered while you while I was doing research for the film is you are, you um, are a photographer, if I remember right, uh, and this is your directorial debut. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't work as a photographer right now. It's it's something I studied and I and I do for myself. But um, but I do work as a cinematographer, mostly for short like video content, not for films. Um, and this is my yeah directing debut. Yeah, I was just gonna ask about that because it it seems like I I, I don't know. I was just like, huh? That that's I I I don't think I've ever heard of a photographer becoming. Uh, a director before now i mm -hmm. some somebody in the comments is probably going to type up an example and i'm going to be uh face palming but um, <laughs> well um i mean uh, it, i think it does happen occasionally but i i hear you i mean it's not it's not the most common route um i i think i when i decided to when i started being interested in film the first jobs i took were editing and I kind of knew that wasn't going to last. I think I, uh, you know, I knew it wasn't something I really had the patience for. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to do it because I felt like coming into film as a photographer, I had some strengths maybe in how I like to compose shots and, and all of that and kind of a, a style, but I didn't. I didn't shoot for the edit and that's something that I learned through editing and then after that I realized I missed photography and so I segued into shooting video um, and 
you know, I've been doing that kind of freelance off and on. Um, and this project, I just, when I heard about Eileen, I thought I just need to jump right in because if I don't, I don't know if I'll get it done and I don't know how long it'll take to find, you know, raise money or anything like that. So I just went in with really minimal gear and just started doing it. Yeah, and it's kind of shot um, in the traditional documentary sense. It's uh, kind of, I, I've heard it's referred to a uh, person on the street almost, but mm -hmm. it's, um, I think the proper term is cinema verite, where you just mm -hmm. kind of are in the scene. Um, and I think your photography uh, expertise kind of does lend a lot more realism to the film mm. uh, because it feels a lot more real. Like you're just, hey, uh, here's here's what Eileen's doing right now and uh, just experiencing that. Um, another one, uh, another Cinema Verite documentary, uh, Sweetheart Deal, which mm, I think mm -hmm. I had, I think I interviewed the director of Today, yeah. um, one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a, that, that was an interesting documentary, but, um, yeah, a lot of interesting documentaries at Slam Dance, uh, so far. I still yeah. Like a pile this high. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been great to be a part of this festival because, you know, they really are independent films. Um, and it's a really strong community and I, you know, I, I wish I could have spent longer time there I was only there for a few days but um but even that I met some great people who I'm going to keep in touch with and uh I definitely plan to watch more of the films since they're online now and I'm not so busy since I'm back home so it's it's a great festival to be a part of yeah I'll have a link to the screening down below and I think it's available through the 30th Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's geo blocked like another one I interviewed today I, was. Yeah, they mine shouldn't be. I don't think it is. Yeah, but eight dollars. Um, I think you can't really get much cheaper than that. That's cheaper than a movie <laughs> ticket. So right. Um, unless you go to a matinee, then it's like five dollars. But um, <laughs> but um, do you have what uh, festivals are you going to be at next? Well, um, we just got word of another one, but it's not public yet, I think. So, you know, they let you know, but then they wait to announce. So I don't think I can say, but we did just get the news of another one uh, in, in the States. And so that's exciting. And the one you mentioned earlier, Hilava, we were in in October, which was really great. I love that festival. Um, I didn't know much about it either before, but it's the biggest. Um, documentary festival in eastern europe and it's in you know the czech republic and it was just like also another very supportive uh in supportive of the filmmakers and um yeah it was just a really great festival so i recommend people check it out yeah i didn't realize uh it was a documentary uh festival um so i'll just briefly say um you know, I one thing I really hope comes back. I, I hope AFI uh, decides to bring AFI docs back next year mm, yeah, or this yeah. year. Um, because I have a feeling that not a lot of people watched AFI docs during AFI Fest last year. Mm. I think I remember trying to uh, uh, submit but couldn't or something like that. Well, I wasn't sure if because it wasn't happening or I, I don't know. Anyway, I can't remember <laughs> so many festivals yeah. that we submitted to and didn't get into. So it's all a blur. Yeah. Last year they, um, they rolled AFI deck docs, which is usually in July. Uh, they rolled it into the AFI fest programming, which is, in oh, November. gotcha. Um, which would have been fine, but with AFI docs, I felt like it kind of had its own personality yeah. where it, it was in the middle of the year and there was a bunch of docs like um oh the naomi osaka docuseries um mm -hmm. roadrunner um mm -hmm. a bunch bunch that i saw out of there and um 
I'm not going to pretend like AFI is listening to this, but if you are, <laughs> uh, uh, and anyone from AFI is listening to this, please bring back AFI docs. I miss it. Um, <laughs> But with that said, uh, Emily, I want to thank you uh, so much for your time. I, I know it's been a busy uh, week with Slam mm -hmm. Dance, and I I uh, know Sundance was also in Park City, and that's winding right. down. But uh, for those at home, you can uh, check out uh, Cisco Kid on the Slam Dance channel. Eight bucks. Um, can't get much cheaper than that um, <laughs> because that's hundreds, hundreds of films. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, no, including, uh, go oh, sorry. No, no, no. You go ahead. Uh, including a lot of the documentaries I talked about today, um, mm -hmm. or not documentaries, but a, a lot of the interviews I I, I, I had today were are on the Slam Dance channel until the thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really nice. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. No problem. Uh, and I don't know if you have a distributor yet, but uh, I I hope you get distribution. Thank you. We don't. So thank you. We're looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll make sure everyone knows about this, but uh, right. thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.